a pushpa which is imagined and created by the mind then pradakshina and namaskara then go around the deity and finally do namaskara these are the 16 limbed puja shodasha upachara now it is all these are over external now avirhotra as well as shrimad bhagavatam make it very clear that atmanam tanmayam dhyayan murtim sampujayet hare atmanam tanmayam dhyayan all these are objective now you have to go to the subjective sphere and then say atmanam tanmayam dhyayan consider your own being inside as identical with the God whom you are worshipping. Are you listening to me? Consider your own heart, your own being inside and imagine that your very self is identical with the deity. Atmanam tanmayam dhyayan Meditating and contemplating in this manner. Murtim sambhujayet hare he the form of Lord Hari will have to be worshipped. And it should be in the nature of a contemplation or a meditation. Contemplation or a meditation. Where you consider that your own inner self, inmost self, is the deity itself. There is no difference. Sheshaam adhaya shirasi swadham nyudvasya satkritam Now you are concluding the puja. What? Sheshaam adhaya shirasi Whatever materials you have used for worship, take them gently and put them on your own head. Swadham nyudvasya satkritam Until now, you worshipped Lord Hari with a lot of respect, devotion, affinity and attunement. With a lot of devotional fervor. Now you take the whole thing from there. Take him into your heart. Atmanam tanmayam dhyayan murtim sambhujayed hare sheshaam adhaya shirasi swadham nyudvasya satkritam What is the meaning here? You have to consider Lord Hari to be identical with you. You are not worshipping any kind of a visible deity as such. The visible form is only as a symbol to represent the divinity. The real divinity is something present in the whole world, omnipresent. In all the Panjabhudas, he is interpenetrating as the consciousness interpenetrates your body. Therefore, take all the remnants like garland, sandal, etc. on one's own head. Either return him to where he came from or put him into your own heart. Now, do you understand the statement now? Deho deva alaya prokto sajivaha kevala shivaha tejet ajnana nirmalyam soham bhavena pujayet. This body itself is the devalaya, and the jiva itself is the shiva. The nirmalya is the ajnana that operates in you, and the real worship is considering the jiva to be the supreme. I am that, I am that. We have a very important verse. Nakashthe vidyate devo Pashane nachamrunmaye Bhavehi vidyate devaha Tasmat bhavohi karanam Nakashthe vidyate devo Pashane nachamrunmaye Devaha, God or Godliness is not certainly in kashta, in an idol made of wood, na pasha ne, nor in a granite block or a marble block idol, na cha mrinmaye, or something made out of earth. So it is not in a clay image or a stone image or a wooden image. Bhave hi vidyate deva. Only in your bhava. What is bhava? In the attitude that arises and emerges from your mind. Bhavehi vidyate devaha. Tasmat 
ഭാവോഹികാരണം ദർ ഫോർ ദറ്റ് ആറ്റിറ്റ്യൂഡിനൽ ഓറിയൻറ്റേഷൻ വിച്ച് ഈസ് ഇൻ ദ നേച്ചർ ഓഫ് എൻ ഇമോഷണൽ അഫിനിറ്റി ഓർ അറ്റ്യൂൺമെൻറ്റ് ദറ്റ് കംസ് ഫ്രം ദ മൈൻഡ് ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് ദ മോസ്റ്റ് ഇമ്പോർട്ടൻറ്റ് ഫൾക്രമാറ്റിക് ഫാക്ടർ ഇൻ ദ ഹോൾ വെർഷിപ്പ് തസ്മാത് ഭാവോഹികാരണം that is what is going to determine and shape your devotion and make it fulfilling shri krishna says in bhagavad gita idam shariram kaunteya kshetram ityi abhidhiyate this body itself is considered to be kshetra he says kshetra practically literally means a field of activity we are giving the name kshetra to a temple in this sense in what sense it is in the temple that you sow in your own mind the seed of devotion and you cultivate the seed make it sprout and ultimately it gives you a bumper crop the temple is meant for that you go to the temple to institute or instill devotion in your heart and boy going there periodically even daily or monthly or otherwise you are trying to reinforce your own devotion 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 and when the devotion grows and it reaches a suitable level what do we understand these are all the initial levels and steps of puja ultimately what is real puja atmatvam girijam adisahajara pranashariram griham പൂജാതെ വിഷയോപഭോഗരചന നിദ്ര സമാധിസ്ഥിതി സഞ്ചാര പദയോ പ്രദക്ഷിണ വിധി സ്ത്രോത്രാണി സർവാഗിരോ യദ്യത്കർമ്മ കരോമി തത്തദഖിലം ശംഭോ തവ ആരാധനം ദിസ് ഈസ് എ ശ്ലോക കമ്പോസ്ഡ് ബൈ ശങ്കരാചാര്യ ഇൻ ശിവമാനസ പൂജ there is a worship offered to lord shiva but then the whole worship including the deity everything is imagined by the mind so it is called a manasa puja the other is called a dravya puja you can also have another puja in the form of jnana puja one is the sensory level another is in the mental level and the third is in the intelligence level atmatvam girijamati സഹജരാണശരീരം ഗൃഹം ആത്മാത്വം മൈ ഡിയർ ലോഡ് ശിവ ഐ കൺസിഡർ യു മൈ വെരി സെൽഫ് മൈ ആത്മാ ഈസ് യുവർ സെൽഫ് ആത്മാത്വം ഗിരിജാമതി യുവർ കൺസോർട്ട് പാർവതി ഈസ് മൈ മതി ഇന്റലിജൻസ് സഹജരാഹ പ്രാണാഹ എ നമ്പർ ഓഫ് പീപ്പിൾ ക്ലോസ്ലി ഫോളോ യു you have a number of assistants and followers in your retinue they are the pancha pranas in my body which keep my body active so that you are constantly there your abode is kept up shadiram griham this body itself is the residence for you puja de vishayopabhogarajana whatever my senses see including what my mouth eats all these are the objects of the world whenever they are partaken by myself through my senses and other organs they are the real worship for you puja nidra samadhi sthiti after taking food for a while being active you go into a state of sleep for a rest that nidra is samadhi sthiti so far as i am concerned my nidra is the samadhi the samadhi sthiti nidra samadhi sthiti sanchara padayo pradakshina vidhi actually you have to be done pradakshina for that pradakshina is actually whatever my feet do in the way of a travel wherever the feet move i consider it to be a pradakshina for you stotrani sarvagiro there are a number of hymns a variety of them all the speech all the words all the articulation that comes from my mouth is really 
a hymn addressed to you i make no exception every word uttered by mouth according to me is a praise and a hymn addressed offered to you yad yad karma karo mi tattadakhilam whatever activity or karma i perform my dear lord shambhu tava aradhanam it is actually a full worship a full fold worship for you yad yad karma karo mi tattadakhilam shambho tava aradhanam my dear lord shambhu everything is a worship for you all my activities i am not going to distinguish between a particular puja with puja materials and the like and procedures no whatever karma i do becomes your worship and where are you in my own body who are you my very self and who are the people who travel with you my own life forces pranas who is your consort my intelligence thus he has identified everything of lord shiva his family his residents his followers his anucharas etc with his own personality just see you can elevate worship to any kind of an inner level our purpose is to resort to sensory worship visible worship first as children as young people we can do only that and as soon as possible you should install it in your mouth by uttering beautiful recitations mantras and the like then go inside and try to bring it about in the form of a mental worship and finally let your intelligence be enquiring after understanding contemplating and realizing the true presence of god kashi kshetram shariram त्रिभुवन जननी व्यापिनी ज्ञान गंगा भक्ति श्रद्धा गयेयम निज गुरु चरण ध्यान योग प्रयाग विश्वेशोयम तुरीय सकल जन मन साक्षि भूतोन्तरात्मा देहे सर्व मदीये यदि वसति पुनस्तीर्थम अन्यत किमस्ति दिस इज अ ब्यूटीफुल वर्ड्स i don't know how many of you will really develop an affinity for these statements and revelations kashi kshetram shariram this is from kashi panchakam composed by shankarajaya kashi kashi kshetram shariram tribhuvan janani vyabini jnana ganga this body itself is kashi kshetram varanasi kshetra त्रिभुवन जननी व्यापिनी ज्ञान गंगा दट ज्ञान द अवेरनेस द कॉन्शियसनेस दैट परमिएट्स इन द होल बॉडी एंड बियॉन्ड पर्टिकुलरली इन द थ्री स्टेट्स वेकफुलनेस स्लीप एंड ड्रीम दैट इज द त्रिभुवन व्यापिनी ज्ञान गंगा जननी त्रिभुवन जननी द गॉडस who is present in all the three worlds it is the jnana ganga which flows through the three states jagrat susupti and sopana bhakti shraddha gayeyam bhakti shraddha gayeyam nija guru charana dhyana yoga prayaga bhakti hi shraddha gayeyam the shraddha and bhakti which i have is really the gaya nija guru charana dhyana yoga prayaga prayaga is considered to be a holy spot a holy place now for me nija guru charana dhyana yoga when i contemplate upon the holy feet of my guru that becomes prayaga for me vishveshoyam turiya you who are a vishvesha the controller and the ruler of the entire universe turiya the fourth factor present in all the three jagrat swapna and susupti sagala janamana sakshi bhuto antaratma the antaratma sagala janamana sakshi bhuta antaratma is that which is denoted by the term i sagala jana 
Manasakshi Bhutaha. This Antaratma is actually the witness of all that is taking place in the mind and the intelligence level of all beings. When all these factors are together present in my body, Dehe Sarvam Madhiye Yedi Vasadi. When all these factors are together present in this body where I am living, Punastir Tamanyat Kimasti. Is there any necessity for me to search for a holy place to take a dip in that? All of you must be knowing well that we are in the midst of a conversation, a direct dialogue between King Nimi on the one hand and the nine yogis on the other. The nine of them, one after the other, began to speak and the speech is continuing. At present we are discussing the dialogue between Avir Hotra and Nimi Chakravarti. Nimi Chakravarti wanted to know what is the practical methodology or a process or a pursuit by virtue of which the human mind can be touched, it can be purified and the devotional notes can be introduced in it. What is the methodology? He calls it Karma Yoga. Is there any procedure, a formality, a kind of a detailed pursuit where the human personality can be involved wholesomely? Not merely the senses, not merely the mouth, not merely the mind, not merely even the intelligence. We will have to involve the ego also. And the devotional touch and sublimation and enrichment should be brought to all these different factors and levels of our personality. It was in answer that Avirhotra was describing in detail about the Vedic form of worship, particularly the Tantric form. There is something called Tantra Samuchaya so far as Kerala is concerned. We have got the entire devotional procedure, the concept of God, the concept of temple, the concept of installation, all these are clearly enunciated there explained there in all detail how to prepare an altar, how to invite God into a specific spot or an idol and what is the way of worshipping him. The worshipper will have to undergo some purificational processes for himself. All these things were in detail discussed. Now he concludes the statement saying Eva magni arkato yadav atithav hridaye chayaha yadati now, if you have heard me properly, you should remember now, the worship is not so much to an external object. It may appear that the worshipper is worshipping an object, but the whole worship is to purify, sublimate, elevate and enlighten the worshipper himself. He has to generate divinity from his own mind and heart. After generating the divinity, he has to express it in the form of a worship. Any action proceeds from the actor. The action also is subsisting upon the actor. Ultimately, the benefit of the action is also to the actor. The entire object part becomes irrelevant or even insignificant at one point of time. When you look at an idol, you have a feeling that here is an object which represents to me the whole divinity. So when I am looking at the deity, I must get the idea of God in his wholesomeness. The success of my worship consists in trying to conceive God in the whole of godly dimension. And this dimension will be felt by your mind. So the mind has to undergo an expansion and elevation correspondingly purity and sublimation also. Unless the worship is able to invoke and manifest all these qualities, it does not fulfill its purpose. So all these procedures are meant for that. Two important points Avirhotra stressed. What? Atmanam tanmayam bhaved. You have to clearly understand that whatever you worship as the deity or as God, is really your own inmost self, that which you denote by the term I. Where is the self? Inside the body, so to say. 
and it is so much experienced by you that is why everyone clearly says I I the I is not a reference to a secondary product or a different product it is always to oneself unless you know that there is something like the I how can you make a reference for it so it is not merely an imagined affair it is an experiential matter maybe you don't know all the details of it a full realization of the whole I you may not have but you have an inkling of it see whenever there is a luminous object you may even see a ray of the light you may not see the full of it but nevertheless it is luminous in the same manner here you will find you may not know fully about what is this eye representing everyone undoubtedly has a feeling an experience something like a cognition of what he says about i he may not know the full measure of it it is exactly in the same manner we go to the temple we worship an idol we consider the idol to be god but do the devotees know what exactly is this godliness in its full measure dimension potential and magnificence they don't know in the same manner we don't know. this self is really the subject and object of worship in other words what in the whole process of worship the worshiper has to access his own self until the self is accessed the worship is not going to be complete and fulfilling it's very very clear shrimad bhagavata repeatedly mentions this whenever there is the least opportunity shrimad bhagavata author veda vyasa similarly shukamuni and the others good exponents they will always emphasize and point out that the place where you have to lay stress is your own mind it is the antaratma the inmost self that goes by the name god and the supreme reality though we are worshiping externally the worshiper is the sole focus in the in the worship by worshiping god are we proposing to bring about any changes or improvements in god certainly not all the improvement changes reformation and refinement are always in us the worshipers this let us be clear so he is concluding the proposition saying evam in this manner agni arka toya do agni means fire arka means sun toya means water all these are panch bhautik in nature now he uses another word ati thau in worshiping or looking after the guests who visit your house there you give a human touch any devotee will have to be a good, good good host whoever comes to your house you will have to be considerate and affectionate to him very sensitively you have to welcome him make him feel happy and whatever are his physical needs that you should provide in the form of food clothing food and shelter etc so looking after atithi satkara as we call it it is a very important aspect of our religious morality and ethics atithau then he says hridaye chaya are you hearing me my dear viewers hridaye chana chaya in the heart also so in the name of devotion we certainly think of the five elements as the manifestation of god if we are able to identify god in all the panchabhudas then your idea about god becomes universally expansive and not only that you must have you must have a human touch to it we have got many items like bala puja kumari puja dambati puja etc what do you mean by that worshiping couples worshiping kumaris and worshiping kumaras all these are incorporated in the same manner we also worship plants and trees tulasi plant is worshiped just like god is worshiped then bilwa tree is also worshiped there are other trees also in fact i would like to tell you that altogether there are 27 stars in the name of each star there is a specific tree traditionally astrologically identified in our land